G'day, I'm Carlos Sands, and this is my corner. I saw all this feverish media coverage of the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee four day long extravaganza, and I have to say, I was very impressed that the British government found something more important than hospitals or public service pensions and wish to spend tens of millions of pounds on because I was actually getting a bit worried after they'd already bailed out all the big banks that caused the global economic crisis that maybe they were running out of worthy causes to spend whatever's left of the taxpayer coffers that they've got. They say it's good for the economy you know and, and fair enough I mean pretty much economics 101 anyone can tell you this you face the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. First thing you do quite obviously is build a giant state and put Robbie fucking Williams on it. They're all up there. You know, like Sir Paul McCartney was up there on stage fawning over these royal parasites, singing his songs, interrupted only by the sound of John Lennon vomiting from beyond the grave. And you know, people say, people say, oh you're just jealous Carla, you're just jealous, that's why you're always banging on about a feudal undemocratic institution that's got no role whatsoever in the 21st century, you know, headed by a parasite leeching off working class money, you know, head of an empire built on the back of colonialism and imperialist exploitation, and you know, they have a point, you know, I'm always told, you know, like, I've done nothing socially useful for my life, you know, I'm always demanding other people do things. Where the fuck's my jubilee? Huh? Where the fuck is the Carlos Sands giant parade? Where's Elton John singing me a fucking song? But there was Julia Gillard. There was Julia Gillard at a special ceremony for the, for the Queen, you know, talking about her lifetime of sacrifice. Well, I want to be the first to put my hand up and say, I for one am not willing to allow the Queen to sacrifice alone. I'm putting myself forward to help share her burden of never having to pay fucking taxes, have a job, just be born one of the world's richest people purely by fluke. It's a tough job, but I'm willing to do it. They bang on and on about you know, her lifetime of, of duty and service. You know, and that does sound pretty arduous, all the fucking waving and shaking people's hands Drinking all that tea? I'm not sure I could do it. I, I hate tea. You know, I reckon that, that would be my line in the sand. I won't be your queen unless you're willing to replace that tea with beer. Yeah, and they try and come up with it. They come up with the, the worst excuses. So they try to a single reason that this something this woman's done that's worth worth celebrating. And they people come out with insanities like, oh, she was she was there for her people and her country in the time of the Blitz. It's like. I think I'm pretty sure that the only thing she managed to do during the Blitz was not get killed. What the hell did people think she was doing up there in a Spitfire fighting fucking German bombers? Which is another thing about English nationalism, not blind nationalism that I can't understand. I, I don't get it, right? Here are these English nationalists banging on and on about, oh, we beat the Germans in, in two world wars, beat the Germans in two world wars. Where do you think the Queen's from? Fucking tens of thousands of them flock into the streets waving their flags in the celebration of the head of a fucking family spawned from a group of inbred German parasitic royals. And then they say, oh, it's, oh, but it's a morale boost. I fall back on that at the very end. And far be it from me to question Tom Jones's capacity to rouse a nation. But I, I do think perhaps, you know, there's only so much getting 10,000 people to sing in unison, why, why, why Delilah, is going to do in a time of job losses, privatisation and state repression. No doubt some people, plenty of people out there did get a bit of a, a kick out of it. I mean, just take, take the dozens of unemployed people. They bust in to work for free, stewarding the flotilla. Uh, got, got them in, uh, told them they're going to get paid when they got there, found out they weren't, uh, denied toilet access for 24 hours, uh, forced to change in public, uh, and then made to sleep under the London Bridge. But nonetheless, merely being able to get close to Her Majesty must have been reward enough. I, I mean, obviously not too close. They had just slept under a bridge, the stinking plebs. Uh, and it's true, the bridge scene, sleeping, sleeping under the bridge scene proved quite controversial. And I say fair enough. Imagine sleeping during the Jubilee. I mean, fucking ungrateful peasants. It just makes me sick. I'm sorry, that just, that just really pisses me off. Oh. 
I'm Carlos Sands. That was my call.